I feel like there's really just three times to drive on food delivery apps to make the most money. And I wanted to ask you, do you know when that is? Because I feel like it's really just breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? But to be honest, I'm someone who's always driven really post work, kind of that dinner rush mainly. I'm assuming, okay, most people are ordering then, but what about the shift that I drive and maybe you drive the least? The breakfast rush. Well, join me on this shift here, really bright and early at 8 a.m. here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, drive in on Uber Eats. We're gonna find out how much I made, of course, but I want you to really look at the numbers. Think about your marketplace so we can answer the question, is the breakfast shift even worth it? Welcome to the channel, my name is Mike. On this channel, I help you with the gig economy, your side hustle, your full-time hustle, making money and creating multiple revenue streams. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. And for a limited time, save 20% on your A to Z course on mastering these delivery platforms. Mastering delivery, again, save 20% using code SUPERCHARGE. So let's think about, firstly, before you even set the alarm clock for early AM, I wanna think about just a simple pros and cons list of the breakfast rush. Okay, the pros. I have done this a few times before, and this is what I've noticed. Let me know down below in the comments if you agree with this. But number one, less traffic. I mean, it's kind of nice if you're driving 6, 7, 8 a.m. It's kind of right in, maybe even earlier than the work commute. So yeah, less traffic. Positive number two, because there's less traffic, less people out, possibly less competition. Well, the early bird gets the worm, the money, I guess, maybe even the bonuses, getting up early in the morning. That could be a positive. But then a negative that I just thought about, you know, really being up at 6, 7, 8 a.m. and really, of course, when you're driving is, yeah, there's less people out, there's less people awake, which includes the staff for these restaurants because the restaurants aren't even open yet. So if you're driving the early a.m. shift, yeah, all the kind of lunch spots obviously are closed and all the dinner spots obviously are closed. So you're left with just, at least here in Pittsburgh, again, let me know what your marketplace is like, but I'm left with McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, just really the breakfast spots. So less opportunities, right? Less pings because there's just less restaurants open then why would Uber Eats give me a bonus like this? I noticed this for the early AM shift here. We're talking 6 AM to 7 AM on this one. It's earn an extra $14.50 for a three consecutive trip streak. I've been seeing this more and more here in Pittsburgh, really in a different pockets of the day. You know, from we saw here, what, 6 to 7 AM, maybe 9 to 10 AM. It kind of goes on that hour threshold, right? 10 to 11, etc. But this one, it's really at the upper end of the threshold, 1450, and that is extra on top of any surge, on top of any boost, on top of any tips. So what that kind of communicates to me is, yeah, they need drivers in that early morning shift. And even though we have less restaurants, they're still getting a lot of pings for those breakfast orders. But let's hit the road here again, 8 a.m. in the morning, and here's a great example of what I'm talking about. The few places that are open here in Pittsburgh, and again, this is going to vary by marketplace, but yeah, this one is Starbucks. Now it's $16.56 for a single order. Now we need to look at the fundamentals, right? And that is the dollars to mile ratio. How much am I getting paid for the miles driven? So 6.2 miles, I like this one. Now you may have seen on stories on mobile that I left this parking lot. I was waiting because I knew that, that, again, that Starbucks is kind of what's open here. So I went to leave, I'm pulling out, and of course, once I leave, I get that ping for Starbucks. Of course, right? Now there's actually kind of a warning sign with this that I didn't really notice at the time, but this is kind of important. Now with Uber Eats, you can't always see the entire order route. We see the starting destination, right? But we can't see the ending destination. Now, what I can see, of course, are the miles, 6.2 miles. Now, look at the line here as far as the route that I can see. It's really going eastward. So yeah, I got pulled away pretty far from the central Pittsburgh, really the power strips that I'm familiar with. Now, that's something to consider as well. Now, sure, maybe you wanna drive a little bit further away from your usual zone, and maybe you don't mind, and maybe you just wanna take a risk. 
but your knowledge of those power strips, really those are areas that are dense with restaurants and with orders, that knowledge kind of fades as you get out of your area of expertise. So it was a little bit slower as it usually is in those more rural areas. And I got this one on the Uber Eats black screen, $12.28, a pretty strong dollar to mile ratio, just 2.8 miles. Now let's look at that again. And this time let's look at the ETA. So look at the ETA here, 24 minutes. Why would a 2.8 mile order take 24 minutes? And really I was waiting down the road anyway. I was about four minutes away from this McDonald's here. Well, you can probably put two and two together here. So it's McDonald's. Remember, this is early morning. And sometimes that means that the in restaurant lobbies are closed which means the time is going to be spent in the drive through So I got there, and I kid you not, there was probably a good six cars lined up around the building in the drive through Now this is a great example of something that I talked about recently. It's reserving your cancellations. So if you drive by McDonald's and you see six cars, and that's the place you're supposed to be picking up from, if you've reserved your cancellations, if you're not really worried about your cancellation threshold, you don't even really need to pull in. And that's what I've done on prior orders. You just immediately cancel. But I was there, it was kind of moving, wasn't really worried about it. I was having a good day. I just took the risk and I pulled in and I waited in the drive through but just, just wait to find out what happened when I got my order. So yeah, I'm waiting probably a good 15 or yeah, 20 minutes there for that drive through and I get my order and I go to pull away and the bag says Grubhub and I'm picking up obviously for Uber Eats. And of course I told the person at the speaker initially, Hey, I'm picking up for Matt on Uber Eats or whatever it was. And that may be a warning for you just to take a half second to check before you pull away from fast food drive throughs Wasn't really a problem, I just pulled off to the side and you can contact the restaurant in the Uber Eats app. You can do the same thing on DoorDash. So I called them, I said, hey, I just picked up an order on Uber Eats. It was for, again, Matt, right? And my bag says Grubhub, I have the wrong order. Can you come out and switch it? So they did, but think about that. I'm waiting for like 15, 20 minutes Finally, I get the bag. I'm ready to go. I want to make some more money. I want to get another order and then it's the wrong bag. Are you serious? So that brings up the age old discussion, something that we haven't really talked about a lot of blacklisting restaurants. It could be all fast food restaurants. It could be that one local restaurant that just constantly drops the ball. There's missing items. They take forever. I don't know. It's crazy hard parking or whatever it is. For whatever reason, you don't and you really don't ever want to go to the restaurants. I'm curious, do you do that? Do you blacklist restaurants? Do you give them kind of warnings? Okay, they dropped the ball, I'll try them again. Let me know down below in the comments. I want to give you my take on this. Blacklisting restaurants, this is a tricky one because if you just kind of close the door on an opportunity, then you're saying, okay, no, I'm automatically marketing that restaurant off in my marketplace. I'm not going there, even if you get an order request and it's very good. But in the other video where I talked about reserving cancellations, I cited a Wendy's that constantly has cars really lined up to the road and people stopping in the road just waiting to turn in. So sometimes I won't necessarily blacklist that restaurant entirely, but I'll decline most every single one unless I'm making a lot of money during that day, during that week, I'm hitting my goals. Maybe I'm just in a good mood and I'm gonna take a risk and I'm gonna go for it. But remember, the reserving of your cancellations, if I do accept it, like I did in that shift last week that had that Wendy's order, then I know if I go there in a slam with cars, I can cancel. So let me know down below in the comments and I did take a few more orders here, didn't screenshot them, so let's go run into the numbers. So this morning shift here in Pittsburgh was from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. So with that delay at the McDonald's and all orders, my total gross revenue was $47.46. Gross revenue per hour, pretty good there. And this is gonna answer our question about the morning shifts, $23.73 per hour. 
My goal for you this year is $25 per hour in gross revenue on any of those rush shifts. Really what we talked about at the beginning of this video, right? The best times to drive, the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner rush. Now consistently, if you're not hitting, ideally, $25 an hour in gross revenue, you might want to really shift to one of those other segments. So I would have liked this to be a little bit higher, maybe $28, ideally, of course, $30 plus an hour. But remember, I got pulled east a bit there, and then of course, the delay at McDonald's. But the morning shift, to really land the plane on that point here, the morning shift is still a contender, especially if you have those morning AM streak bonuses. So during this shift, I completed four deliveries. I did receive four tips as well with a higher than average tip of $6.50. Business miles, I drove 22.6 business miles, which gives me a tax deduction of $2.10 per mile. So I feel like the verdict on the early morning AM shifts is still open. So we definitely got to hit more of these early AM shifts for you. And let me know how is your marketplace? And of course, what do you drive? Do you like the early morning AM shifts? Maybe it's a little bit, of course, that less traffic on the road and maybe less restaurants open, but perhaps less pressure because of the time of day. Or do you really bang out those post work rushes, the lunch rush, the dinner rush, and what pays best for you? So if you got value in this video, definitely drop me a like, and you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you, and I'll see you in the next one.